good morning sewing friends it's Anne from sew paradise so I wanted to talk with you today about a stylish midlife mindful wardrobe so let's talk first about a mindful wardrobe what is that so you probably heard this term before and it's basically a wardrobe that you craft that thinks about the people and the places where our clothing is made and what it's doing to our <clears throat> environment or the people that are involved all clothing is handmade all of it it's either handmade by you or it's handmade generally by a young woman or a child in a third world country <clears throat> that is the reality of the clothing uh, chain here and it came to light probably most strongly with the factory collapse in Bangladesh a number of years ago where more than a thousand people were killed um, these uh, sweatshop factories as we all know <clears throat> are generally populated with um, people who don't have a lot of other means to earn a living. Now that's not to say that they don't earn a living, it's just that the conditions that they work in are substandard and they're not paid very well. They're, they're really expected to work 12 hours a day, six days a week typically, and um, in many cases they're forced to live on the property or in a campus. Um, essentially they become slaves. So when we think about a mindful wardrobe, we think how do we want to craft something that's better for the people and the environment? Textile waste is probably one of our leading causes of, uh, of long-term pollution, both in dyes and in uh, chemicals used to manufacture textiles. And then, of course, we've all seen the pictures of the mountains of clothing that, uh, that live in Africa and in the Atacama Desert. These clothes, in many cases, were never worn. So, which is really, really shocking. So in order to kind of disassociate ourselves from that and really have a mindful wardrobe that works for us, where we're also nodding to the trends, but not being expected to purchase something for a 20 year old, we enter the, the phase of mindful wardrobe. And typically when we get to our midlife, we, we really start thinking about some of these things. How much do I really need? What do I really need to have in my wardrobe? And for a lot of us, our lives are changing. So we may have gone back to work at home, some of us might be retired, or we've gone to just a really much more casual lifestyle. And things are changing, our bodies are changing. We have to sew for that new body or buy for that new body. So let's talk a little bit about what I have on and how you can craft a mindful wardrobe. So I'm gonna step back here briefly, just so you can see, and we'll talk a little bit about this gal here. I am wearing a pair of cropped wide leg pants. These are the Emerson from True Bias. And they have, uh, this is the low rise. There's a low rise and a high rise. This is the low rise because I tend to be a little lower rise, but it does still come to my belly button, actually a little above. But if you want to make the high rise, it comes up on most normal people just above your belly button. Okay, so it's a high rise, higher rise pant. But this is the low rise, view B, I think. Um, it is cropped. <clears throat> it is wide. You could make them full length. They're straight at the bottom, just go straight down. You can make them full length. They also come in shorts, which I've shown you a number of times. This top is a basic cap sleeve, um, cut on cap sleeve blouse. Lots of companies have these. This happens to be one for knits from Christine Johnson Patterns. It's not available anymore, um, but I will post some alternatives at my blog at sewparadise.com. Now you'll notice the jacket had a conventional label tag. Indeed it is. It's a white linen blazer. I bought it on Poshmark. So Poshmark and the myriad of online sellers are a great way to buy things that you don't normally sew. So for example, I don't really sew jeans because I don't really have too much difficulty finding jeans that fit. Um, for the most part, although I could probably get a better fit if I wore my own made jeans, and I may do that. Um, but I tend to buy a brands I like in sizes I like and in fits I like, just in whatever, you know, wash or color or whatever that I want to buy. And so I use Poshmark mostly. Um, but there's also other uh, marketplaces that are a different model. Poshmark model is this, the individual, it's like, kind of like eBay, the individual person lists their garment and they get most of the money and Poshmark takes a cut and sends them a label. Um, the other ones, they buy your stuff usually for much less than you would want to sell it for and then they resell it. So there's different models and there's different reasons to buy for both. But I find that if I'm gonna buy something from Marketplace, I can search something like a white linen blazer and find exactly what I'm looking for. But don't also overlook really nice consignment stores or even thrift stores <clears throat> in your community that might have a white linen blazer or a navy blue cable cotton sweater. <laughs> Some of those are kind of specific searches and you might need an online marketplace to fulfill that. So this is a great way to craft a mindful wardrobe. So the other thing about mindfulness is not acquiring too much. 
And I think when we start talking about not acquiring too much, that's really a definition of what we need for our lives. Like many of us, I've had to buy almost a whole new wardrobe in the last three years because I gained that menopause weight. It's really frustrating. But rather than just schlump around and clothes that are too small for me, I said, you know what, I'm gonna embrace this body that I have right now. I'm gonna dress this body that I have right now. And I'm gonna say, you know, 20 pounds, hey, <clears throat> now I've got clothes to fit you too. But the other way that we can craft mindfulness is to use textiles that ordinarily would be destined for goodwill potentially in landfills. So this blazer, and I'm going to pull this back just a little bit so you can see it. This blazer is from, Re, I don't want to say Reclaim Textiles, but really, yes. The woman who sold me this wool, okay, so this is wool, and I'm going to actually pick this up and show it to you because I have a little, bunch of fun details on these pockets. Look at that. That's the selvage on those pockets. Isn't that awesome? I'm also vintage button right there too. So the woman who sold me this wool was never going to sew it. And this probably was in somebody's stash that she got. An aunt, a grandmother, somebody who was sewing suits in the 70s and 80s or nice garments, maybe even the 60s. This is definitely vintage. And this ordinarily would go to a Goodwill store and not very many people would buy it because a lot of people don't buy wool anymore. Um, but I like it for blazers, ponchos, wraps, things like that. Um, I make it for my outerwear. I don't have to wash it. Um, I generally tend to use dry all in my dryer or dry clean, but I don't clean them very often unless I get something on it, and usually it's a spot um, that I'll take off. But this is a great garment for those reclaimed textiles, and I have a couple of other ones too that I've also made from reclaimed textiles. I love this over the same white t-shirt and jeans. Um, it's a great outfit for me. It's comfortable. Um, it's not too wooly, so it's, it's a little wooly, but it's not, oh, it's so itchy, not like that. Um, but of course you could always line a blazer like this, like this one is lined. You could always line a blazer if you wanted to have a lined little blazer. This is a super easy beginner level one to sew. If you've never made a jacket before, this is one. This is the Christine Johnson boyfriend. I think she might still have some of these in print. Um, I don't think it's available as a digital download. I will try to find an alternative um, that works that I can sew up that I can give to you because I don't think she's going to be making this anymore But this is a great cut. It's it's a little slim through here It's got some nice shaping in the back. You can see here It's got some nice shaping down here because it's got a center back seam It's a lot and it's got a shawl collar which is easier to sew So it also looks like a lot of those sweater blazers that you'll see like J. Crew and things like that, especially if you make it in a knit. So I'm going to go ahead and set her to the side here just for a minute. So when we start talking reclaimed textiles, you want to look for textiles that aren't damaged in any way, of course, um, especially wool. So make sure it doesn't have any moth holes or anything like that in it. Um, if it does, you can always piece it or use that reclaimed wool to make other things felted or other things like that. Um, but this particular type of garment is perfect for using some of those older reclaimed textiles that we haven't really thought of um, utilizing. And <clears throat> capes, ponchos, wraps, I've got a wonderful poncho pattern for free, um, which can also be used as a top pattern too, like a open um, wide sleeve kind of, um, you know, flowy top. So if you have any soft rayons or soft linens or something like that, that would be perfect for that. But this particular idea of using a reclaimed textile is really a wonderful one. The other line of patterns I really like is the Anne Normandy patterns, and she uses reclaimed textiles for her stuff. Um, she uses linen tablecloths. Um, obviously, if some of those have stains, you're going to have to work around them, cut around them, or incorporate uh, some embroidery or something into it uh, that would cover up those stains. But reclaimed linens, things like that. Any reclaimed fabric that you want to work with in a sewing pattern is always a great thing to do, especially if you're going to repurpose it. Estate sales, I got a whole box of stuff from a friend's mom who's alive, but she's no longer sewing, um, and he wanted her stuff to go to a good home. And so far, I've um, he's bringing me more stuff, but so far I've got a beautiful short coat length um, uh, aubergine uh, felted wool. It's just spectacular. It's like coat wool. It's probably, you know, $50, $60 a yard, and I've got at least two and a half yards of it. So um, that's a great way to repurpose those textiles and put them into something that's stylish and fashionable. Now, for midlife, what we're looking for are things that are going to camouflage or, or help um, encompass our midlife midsection, right? Blazers are a great way to do that. A poncho, a wrap, a looser top on top is a great way to do that. And I show tons of patterns 
um, that you can use for that. But you'll notice my garment, my, my outfit is relatively classic. Yes, I have on cropped wide leg pants. Those have been in style for a long time. Um, I also have on a blazer, which is timeless. I have on a basic t-shirt, also timeless. Think about making your classic mindful wardrobe a little bit more on the classic. You can go edgy classic, moto jackets, a little bit of leather, those types of things are always appropriate for a classic, but if you make it 70% classic and 30% trendy, I think you're really in a good place. I've talked a lot about adapting some of those trendy garments and those trendy looks um, for um, use. We did a, a tube top out of some uh, remnants, basically, of fabric that I had. So we did a midlife suitable tube top, right, which is very trendy right now when the young women. So we did that. We also, um, I also show how to do some scrapping on some basic boxy tops. That's another great way to do um, uh, some reclaiming of fabrics that you might have in your stash, keep scraps hanging around. Um, so we've done quite a bit of that. And I think just the idea that we're being a little bit more mindful in what we're putting on our bodies, what we're sewing. We're, we're generally gonna be sewing slower than we can acquire. Well, for most of us anyway, right? And if you have a lot of patterns in your stash, and a lot of fabrics in your stash, we're gonna do some hauls, right? We're gonna haul some stuff up from our stash and show it here, and I want you to do the same thing. Think instead of going out and buying all those patterns on sale, that you go look in your pattern stash and say, what do I have that's like this? And really learn how to modify those patterns to do what you want. Um, there's a fabulous book out now from Mimi G called um, So It's Like Make It Your Own for Sewing Your Own Wardrobe. But the meat and potatoes of this book is modifying the patterns that come with it. Now, of course, it comes with patterns, but the meat and potatoes is modifying the patterns to make them into other things. And this is a technique that you can use for any sewing pattern that you have. So at the very least, it's a wonderful book full of some basic patterns, but it's also a great book to learn how to do those techniques. And I strongly encourage you to do it. A lot of sewing books have this in it, but I don't think I've ever seen one that's really quite as specific about making it your own as I do see there. And of course, Mimi G is, you know, they're very modern and classic. You know, I mean, you could wear these patterns 10 years from now, you could have worn them 10 years ago. Um, so they're, they're classic, but they're modern. Um, fabrication really, really uh, makes it go. So being mindful about your wardrobe, being mindful about how you dress your midlife body is a place where I want you to go. Now I've put up a couple patterns throughout the video so that you can see um, a couple different things. I'll also put them in my blog at sewparadise.com. So head over to sewparadise.com, you'll get the whole list of patterns that I like. You'll also get some of my favorite resources for things like this that I'm not necessarily always gonna make. Um, I do make blazers, obviously. I got one right here, and I got like three or four more of these, just like them. Um, but I do make blazers, and I have a couple different kinds. Um, so I absolutely do make them, but I also buy them, particularly when I'm talking about something like this white linen blazer that I was able to get on Poshmark for, I think, $30. I can't even buy the linen fabric that I would use for this for $30, unless I got it in an estate sale. Reclaim textiles. So that's it. That's how you craft a mindful, stylish midlife wardrobe.